Okay, as we continue finding the domains, question number six gives us this function, which is a rational function. Question number seven is also a rational function. So we know how to find the domains of rational functions. Step number one is to locate your restricted values. Now in this problem, in any problem, when you have a rational function and you want to find the restricted values, you look in the denominator and you see what makes the denominator become zero. x squared plus 4x can be factored. In fact, a better way to write this function to start with, let me rewrite the function. The numerator I could care less about. That's not helping me find RVs. The denominator factors by pulling out an x, and then you have an x plus 4. So there are two factors. This factor would become 0. This factor would become 0 if you use 0. This factor would become 0 if you used negative 4. So because we have two factors, we have two RVs. Okay? The first RV, x cannot be 0. Okay? This x could not be 0. And here, this x cannot be negative 4. So, in this case, what did we do? We factored first, and then we, we basically set each factor to zero and, you know, solved it if you were actually showing every step of the work, but that's not necessary. What makes this zero is zero, so we restrict it. What makes this factor zero is negative four, so it becomes a restriction. So this time we have two restrictions. Now, to find the domain, we draw our number line. Okay? Draw the number line. Put negative infinity on this direction and put positive infinity above that arrow. And we throw out our two restricted values. So where we have a zero, we put an open circle, meaning it's not allowed in our domain. And then we go over here to negative four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And we put an open circle there also. So what I've done is I've drawn a number line, okay? and I have two open circles on that number line, meaning those numbers cannot be used in my domain. My function cannot eat those numbers, otherwise it would make the denominator zero. Everything else on my number line can get shaded in. And what I'm shading in is part of the domain. Now all I do is I take the shaded in portions and I write them in interval notation. As I read from left to right, this first portion would go from negative infinity to negative 4. Remember to put a paren because negative 4 is not included. Our next portion is between negative 4 and 0. We put a union. Negative 4 comma 0. And remember, no brackets. These are parens only. Okay. We're getting now to our final and third piece. Put a union. And this portion of the graph goes from 0 to infinity. So basically, whenever you have two restricted values, you've thrown out two values, there are going to be three sets written in interval notation with unions in between them both. And notice I do not have any brackets in this problem because... Brackets would mean include those values, and RVs mean to throw them out. Question number seven works the same way. This is a rational function. Let's rewrite the function. The numerator stays. I could care less about the numerator. The denominator factors as x plus 7 times x minus 7. Okay? Well, by factoring the denominator, we see there are two factors. So we are going to have two restricted values. x cannot equal. This first factor, negative 7 would be a restriction. And in this factor, positive 7 would be a restriction. So we have two restricted values. When we draw our number line, which is the next step, I want you to write negative infinity over that arrow and positive infinity over this one. 
find the number negative 7 and put an open circle on it, which means you're throwing it out. It is not part of the domain. Find the number positive 7 and put an open circle on it, which means you're also throwing it out because it's not part of the domain. And you're going to shade in everything else because the other things that you're shading in are part of the domain. They are allowed to go into the function without, tr without causing trouble. Now I have three pieces to my answer. This is my domain on a graph. When I convert this first piece into interval notation, I write negative infinity comma negative 7, remember, paren, union. To write the middle piece, the middle piece goes from negative 7 to 7, again, with parens, not brackets, and one final union, and the last piece goes from 7 to infinity. And this long thing is my answer. It is the domain of my function written in interval notation. And we're done.